get back to our example. So, uh, remember we wanted to make a gain of 4. So, we had V in and we uh, had this voltage controlled our forward amplifier was this voltage controlled voltage source. which basically took this error voltage and generated this A times V E, where this A was very, very large, correct. So, this was our forward amplifier, remember. Now, uh, so, uh, uh, so basically uh, uh, there is a symbol for this. Okay, uh, the symbol that is used is this and uh, the voltage between these two terminals is called V e and the output voltage is V o and V o is uh, some a times V e where a tends to infinity. They try to make it as large as possible, right. Uh, but as I said, nothing in the world which is supposed to be infinite will be infinite. So, in a commercial op amp, you go and pick something off the shelf. I mean, this is what is called an operational amplifier. And why is it called an operational amplifier? So, when we go, if we go back to uh, our negative feedback uh, block diagram, Remember that the closed loop performance the closed loop performance if the loop gain is very large the closed loop performance only depends on the properties of the feed back block correct okay so basically, uh, uh, so you know, if you wanted uh, a gain of five, what should I put F uh, F as? If I wanted a closed loop gain of five, what should F be? One by five, right? If I, uh, if somebody else wants a gain of uh, you know four, uh, then uh, uh, F becomes uh, one by four, and uh, so on. So basically, you know, uh, some uh, smart guys saw a business opportunity in this whole thing and said, what we're going to do. I mean, if you look at uh, the, ne the basic negative feedback loop, they said, well, you know, each person wants their own F, correct? I, I possibly cannot have a company which basically, you know, uh, keeps uh, 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 tweaking F for each uh, each person. I'm going. I'm not going to bother. I'm going to just sell this part as a as a commercial part, right? where my only job is to simply take a small voltage and amplify it up by a very large factor uh, and then I will give it to the user and the user is free to use whatever F he or she wants, right. If he wanted a gain of 2.5, he wanted a gain of 4.6, I mean their headache to basically go and figure out the appropriate F to put so that the closed loop gain is what they want. And that f is is re easy to realize because it is smaller than one, which means that you know one way of doing it is you know as he pointed out, use a potential divider. You buy some two resistors with the right values and then put them in the as the feedback network, and the uh, the closed loop gain will be one over the attenuation of the feedback network. Okay. Now it not only is that as we'll see going forward, using the operational amplifier, you can do a whole bunch of of uh, mathematical operations. Right, uh, and uh, remember, it's 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 uh, uh, it's it's uh, 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 it is uh, the closed loop gain is one over f, right? One over f is the inverse of f. So it turns out that uh, you know you can think of feedback as generating an inverse function. Okay, here the the uh, uh, the uh, the the function of f is simply to attenuate. The inverse is to amplify. Correct, and that's what uh, the uh, the feedback loop is doing. Correct, the negative feedback is generating one over f again of one over f, 
which is the inverse of of f in the sense that you take a, an input process it through f process it through 1 over f the result is the input back itself. So, it turns out that if you put uh, say if f happens to be a, a, a differentiator uh, then it turns out that you can realize uh, integration because the integration is the inverse of differentiation. If you put uh, an exponential as f right uh, you can generate a uh, logarithm if you put a logarithm as f you can generate the exponential. So, basically in general uh, uh, you know uh, uh, negative feedback is basically uh, very useful to generate inverse functions and therefore, a whole bunch of mathematical operators the moment this became possible right people realized that you, you know it only depends on the on the uh, the closed loop performance only depends on the properties of the feedback block. They began to realize that uh, you can do a whole bunch of mathematical operations with uh, with this negative feedback loop provided provided the loop gain is very large. In other words, that amplifier A has infinite gain, right. So, this amplifier and remember as we just talked if the gain is so large. Uh, uh, you know then it does not matter how large it is correct ok. So, uh, 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 so basically uh, you can use this uh, and an appropriate feedback network to generate a whole bunch of mathematical operations and that is why this uh, amplifier is called the operational amplifier ok. And, uh, uh, this, this is the uh, and then you know then this became a commercial part and people started you know selling this uh, I mean companies started making it people started using it and uh, and so on right. So, uh, so therefore the for the uh, uh, so now uh, let us get back to what uh, you know we wanted to realize a gain of 4. So, let us give it uh, some uh, 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 some circuit form. So, uh, so we want to compare V in with v out by 4 or uh, v. Uh, so, basically what do you think uh, we should how do we generate v out by 4? You use a, a, a divide I mean a, 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 a resistive divider. So, in general if you want to realize a gain of k uh, if this is r uh, what should the top resistor be? k minus 1 times r and uh, what are we going to do? We are going to compare this is V out by k, we are going to compare V in with V out by k Okay, and uh, go and kick. So this is basically V e, the error voltage. All right, and uh, this is the output voltage. So you go and kick the output voltage so that. Right, and the way it's normally drawn is basically this is k r, k minus one into r. All right, does it make sense? All right, and uh, so if the op amp, also called uh, op amp in short, okay. So if the op amp is ideal, then and it's embedded inside a negative feedback loop. So if you have an ideal op amp, namely the gain is infinite. and op amp is embedded in 
inside a negative feedback loop. Right? Then what comment can we make about VE? V is 0, right, okay. Why? Very good. Basically, uh, the output voltage of the op amp must be finite, right, and the, and the gain of the op amp is infinite. So, the, uh, the error must be 0, right. So, this is a, uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, one rule uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, basically analyze op amp circuits right so uh, uh, and uh, so therefore ve is zero right so if if this is ideal these two voltages are the difference between the two voltages is zero correct and uh, uh, this is a voltage controlled voltage source so, what comment can you make about uh, the current flowing here? Remember the op amp is a voltage controlled voltage source in a, so this is a VC, VS. So, what is the uh, current flowing into the voltage source? Voltage controlled voltage source. What is the input impedance of an ideal voltage controlled voltage source? It is a voltage controlled voltage source. So, voltage controlled x y whatever must be one where when you connect the input port across it is measuring a voltage and generating a voltage which is dependent on the voltage it measures. So, an ideal voltage controlled source whether it is a voltage source or a current source should not modify the voltage it is measuring. The only way it cannot modify the voltage it is measuring is if can if it does not draw any current. So, the input impedance of any voltage controlled source whether it is a voltage controlled voltage source or a voltage controlled current source must always be infinite correct. So, likewise therefore, uh, if you I mean the op amp is a voltage controlled an ideal op amp is a voltage controlled voltage source with an infinite gain and therefore, the input current it draws must be 0 by virtue of it being a voltage controlled voltage source. By virtue of the infinite gain, the error between the two input voltages of the op amp must be 0 provided what conditions are satisfied. Provided gain is infinite that is one thing, but, but uh, and the op amp must be inside a negative feedback loop, right. It is very important for the op amp to be enclosed inside a negative feedback loop. Only then will the following two rules hold for op amp circuit analysis. So, if you assume that the op amp is in embedded is ideal and is embedded inside a negative feedback loop, right, the two voltages V A will be equal to V B and I A and I A and I B will both be equal to 0, right. So, the potential of uh, uh, the potential A and B are at the same potential the voltage at a and b is the same. So, it is pretty much like a short circuit because the potential I mean what is a short circuit you know you uh, the voltage if you have a two nodes and you have a short between them the voltage of the two nodes is the same correct. But on the other hand so, V a and V b are at the same voltage like in a short circuit. Right? However, what is uh, you know the difference key difference between a short circuit and uh, uh, and uh, 
the two input terminals of the op amp. In a short circuit, you can push any amount of current between those two nodes, correct. Uh, but in this case, no current flows from A to B. Does it make sense? So, this is this is like a short circuit, but is definitely not a short circuit because a short circuit will allow will would allow any amount of current to flow through, but this does not. So, this is therefore this is what is called a virtual short. Where V A is equal to V B, but no current flows. Does it make sense? All right, but the key point to remember is that this virtual short. I mean, so this. Uh, 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 so when you see a new op amp circuit, which you have never seen before, and therefore don't remember uh, how uh, what the output is in terms of the input, right? If you know that there is going to be, if you know that the op amps are ideal, and B, if you know that there is negative feedback around the op amp. Now it's easy to figure out if there is negative feedback around the op amp or not. How do we do it? You break the loop, you, have, you yank up one side, see what comes back you know when you go around the loop. If what comes back is in the opposite direction of the stimulus, you know that the op amp is inside a negative feedback loop, correct. Since uh, uh, once you know this and if you know that the op amp is ideal, then you can apply these two rules namely there is no current flowing through the terminals of the op amp there is the two inputs of the op amp are have the same potential right so with this we will be able to analyze the analyze the circuit right so so basically this brings us to uh, the uh, the rules for circuits with ideal op amps. So, first make sure that there is negative feedback around the op amp. Correct. Once you make sure that there is negative feedback around the op amp, what can you do? What must, what is the next thing that you do? The two input terminals draw no current. and the two input terminals have the same potential. 